Uh, hello, I am Mike Kaplan, amazing comedian, uh, or comedian, depending on your point of view, everything's subjective. I started off as a small person and grew up into a bigger small person. Uh, along the way, I went to school for linguistics, and uh, during that time became a comedian, started originally wanting to perform as a singer-songwriter, but uh, this way I don't have to carry a guitar around. So now comedy. I started out comedy in Boston because I was in school up there and uh, the comedy studio is where I first performed comedy, which is a good place for it because uh, it's right in the name. Uh, it's a great club and uh, just little by little after I started there, I learned that there were oh, other places you could perform comedy and that's also beneficial to being a comedian. So the Boston scene was great. Uh, I learned a lot, I grew a lot and then I moved to New York a couple years ago and that's where I am now. And then basically Last Comic Standing came about because every year that they have it, uh, they're like, hey, who wants to do it? And then uh, lots of people want to, and I went out for it a few times in the past, and this year was the first year that uh, I made it through. And uh, now that's why you're watching this video. Fame. I am not surprised that established comedians go out for Last Comic Standing because Number one, it's not like American Idol. It's not like it wouldn't be like you know uh, Michael Jackson showing up. Well, that would be weird at this point. Uh, that would be amazing if they could get him. The numbers would go way up. Uh, but I mean, obviously, you know, comedians like Chris Rock and Jerry Seinfeld are not going out for Last Comic Standing because they're they're all set. But uh, there's like many like great comedians who n people haven't heard of who could certainly benefit from millions of people seeing them a week and knowing who they are. Uh, so. And to, to even succeed on the show, you need to have at least, you know, to, if you get to the end of it, you know, a certain amount of material that you can't have if you haven't been in the business for a certain amount of time. So it, some people see the show and they think, hey, those people have already successful. Well, that is why they can be successful on the show. So it makes sense for anybody who the show could help to go out for the show. I am never surprised uh, to see what happens in a number one in a reality show because the rules aren't the same like at any point like they say they say right at the end of every show I think uh, that some decisions like when when it's America voting that's America voting but before that happens when the judges are deciding they say that the producers and NBC have their input as well so I think it is in their interest to say like comedy is full of straight white men uh, just majority of comedians are straight white men. So there's a lot of great straight white male comedians, but I think it is in the show's interest to not have the top 10 be mostly straight white men. Uh, so in that respect, uh, it can be surprising that like, hey, that guy is really funny. Why didn't he make it? That guy's really funny. Why didn't he make it? Uh, there is a sense in which the show, uh, like, you know, I think diversity is desirable uh, for America for the show. So that's, I think, one of the reality show conventions. And additionally, uh, comedy contests are subjective in general. Like, you know, there is no, that guy is funny, that guy is not funny. You know, this person is enjoyable to some, this person is enjoyable to others. Uh, so I, I would never look at somebody and be like, why did that person get it over that person? Because my tastes aren't universal and nobody's tastes are. Like, the people making the decisions and the people voting uh, all have their say. Uh, Craig Robinson was a, is a is a great person to be around. He's a really positive guy, at least as far as I've experienced. And uh, a boring answer. So I like all the judges. Like I knew all of them before to some degree. Like I have worked with Andy Kindler a number of times, and I'm a huge fan of his. He's one of my favorite comedians. Like even you know. Despite, he's not in charge of my fate anymore, and he's still one of my favorite comedians, and he was before the show. Geraldo uh, is a greatly respected and deservedly so comedian who I also always enjoy. And uh, Natasha, I'd say, is, I think, the least ex experienced comedy-wise, just compared to those two. But she's been in it, you know, longer than I have, and she's also, uh, she's hilarious. Like, I thought her set in the finale was amazing like so I feel like her comedy chops are certainly up there she knows what you know again there is no one thing that funny is but she is funny and her opinion is something that I respect 
Uh, next up, I go on the road with the Last Comic Standing tour uh, all over the country, minus wherever it doesn't go. And then I go, hopefully, back to all those places on my own and to the places that we missed. So if you're somewhere and you want me to be there, uh, let me know, and hopefully I'll get there. Uh, anywhere that says Mike Kaplan, uh, Mike is spelled M-Y-Q, and then Kaplan is spelled the normal way, K-A-P-L-A-N. So MikeKaplan.com or at Twitter or Facebook. I have a fan page. Uh, if you still have MySpace, I re I'm rarely there. Uh, all over the place. Anywhere, internet slash Mike Kaplan. I'm Mike Kaplan, and you're watching YuletideSnapper.com. <laughs>